Welcome back to our video lectures on the economical thought of Antonio Rosmini. In the first lecture, uh, we confronted with the book of uh, Carlos Hövel, of the thesis of Carlos Hövel, who interpreted the economical thought of Antonio Rosmini in the line of civil economy. And uh, we pronounced our first doubts on this interpretation, beginning our uh, critical uh, analysis of his book and uh, the affirmation that um, according to our view it is uh, much uh, more reasonable to see in Rosmini a profit of the 20th century auto liberalism and social market economy than not a uh, think uh, totally inserted uh, in a tradition which begins from Napolitanian Enlightenment, uh, Genovese and uh, uh, the civil economy tradition uh, till the actual thinkers who contrast in a critical way um, the actual liberal thought. Then in the second uh, video lecture we had an analysis of various uh, types of liberalism such as liberalism, libertarianism and order liberalism to clarify uh, the, very, the variety of liberal thought uh, to, consider, to consider that liberalism is not a monolithic structure, it's not a monolithic thought, it's not a school, it's uh, not definable as uh, only one system but it admits um, a broad discussion on, about uh, fundamental principles, about a uh, foundation of uh, liberty, about uh, the concept uh, of liberty and uh, of liberal institutions and so the possibility to collocate eventually also Rosmini in this tradition. Rosmini, who has an autonomous liberal foundation of the institutions of uh, free market, of uh, institutions of capitalism, but, uh, but uh, he has this foundation every time in a special referring to moral ground principles to the grounding of liberty to a specific social dimension of liberty itself. Then in the third uh, video lecture we had the concrete uh, the concrete comparison between auto liberalism and Rosmini and we saw uh, first of all not only in the principle of person, in the principle of uh, liberty of uh, private ownership but also in the important principle of competition, uh, very strong uh, affinity of Rosmini and auto liberalism. This affinity is uh, affirmed once more in another uh, part of the philosophy of right of Rosmini in the last part, in the part in which Rosmini speaks about the civil society and uh, uh, where he underlines that the principle of free competition preserves civil society from its injuries. First of all, to reflect this high value that Rosmini assigns to competition, um, we uh, have now also to consider that Rosmini said here and I uh, quote directly from this last part precision requires that we say the human person is subsistent human right. Now we consider how this principle of competition is based in Rosmini in the principle of person and this principle of person in as we said in uh, uh, in uh, subjective individual sense not a reductive one but in a subjective foundation of uh, liberty not in uh, non, not in a relationship uh, foundation because Rosmini here maintains the importance and the positive aspect of methodological uh, individualism. So the human person is subsistent human right. It follows that the person is the essence of right, said Rosmini. Of its essence, person has all the elements that form the definition of right. In the essence of person are all the elements which define the essence of right. As we said, the person is an intellective subject in so far it contains a supreme active principle. This definition clearly considers what 
which with that of right itself. Also, now we have had the combination, the end of uh, the philosophy of right, the last book, the principle of free competition. Now it is referred to the beginning of the philosophy of right, to the first paragraphs of individual right, where Rosmini has defined this principle of person, of personhood, we can say. Contrariously to the civil economic approach and more closely to Kant and Hegel, the essence of right is ontologically founded in the individuality of person. We cannot recognize in Rosmini a relational foundation of right and social institutions. We only have to analyze in which way the individual foundation of liberty and rights are morally constituted in an intersubjective dimension. The relationship to others is defined of that of not harming others. So the not harming others, this Kantian principle is before the intersubjective dimension in Rosmini. This is not a lack of moral foundation. This is for Rosmini the right balance between the autonomous liberal foundation of institution of free markets and the moral reference of them. We can safely say, this is a quotation of Rosmini, we can safely say that the human person is the first proper seat of rural freedom and human nature the first proper seat of ownership if we consider human nature as pertaining to and subordinate to person, that is, as something proper to person. In this concept of property, we find the passage in Rosmini from an abstract methodological individualism to the concreteness of human nature. This passage is very important, because as Kant uh, is... Uh, is on, uh, remains on the abstract, of the abstract dimension of individuality. And also Hegel bases the individual dimension of freedom in its abstractness and recuperates the social dimension, the ethical life, uh, only in an over-individual dimension, in the dimensions of family, civil society and in the end of the state. Rosmini has the foundation has the integration of concreteness of human nature in the personal principle. This is the concreteness of personal principle. As we said in the beginning, this personal principle does not have uh, to be a contradiction to the importance of subjective and individualistic founded economy. Because only in this way also liberty can be reflected, can be understood in its deeper roots. But the principle of person, which has not, uh, as, as we said, which has not to blur the difference between the liberal dimension of institutions and uh, the moral foundation, this principle of person is important in Rosmini, but not in the sense of civil economy, but in the sense of the concreteness of human nature. And this dimension, as we see uh, now further on, is, all, is the same element which order liberalism has and underlines in a critical difference to the foundations of right in Kant and in German idealism. And here, and for, for, for this, and, uh, and uh, for, this, um, for this theme, the order liberalists recur to the phenomenologists. But let's see this, the steps, the steps, one and another in right order. At the same time, in this dimension, we can also find a specific difference uh, to the Hegelian conception of the dynamics of recognition through right. Rosmini does not think that freedom affirms itself 
through the limitation of others' freedoms, through the negation, as Hegel says, of others' freedoms. This is freedom in its abstract dimension. In its abstract dimension, one freedom does exclude uh, freedom of others. And Hegel, only in the concreteness of ethical life, has, can, found the concrete, the positive affirmation of liberty. But in ethical life, he is already in an over-individual dimension. In the individual dimension, we have the limitation, the negation of individual freedom, freedom in relationship to the freedom of others. This would be a foundation of right, which in the intersubjective perspective would remain subjective. Rosmini does not think personality and the dignity of person beginning from this subjective dimension. He has a subjective foundation of right, uh, as we see, but this subjectivity is not a, neg no, it's not a negation, it is not a limitation of it, it's not, an, it's, it's not the abstract dimension of subjectivity. But Rosmini begins um, from the recognition by the others. Subjectivity is always subjectivity which is recognized and which is recognized in its concrete dimension, in its ontological dimension. This recognition is not a mere theoretical dimension. It is not only cognitive, it is not merely cognitive, but already moral. Because Rosmini here um, says, he, here he treats about the recognition. And recognition for Rosmini is a practical movement. Is the practical movement the dynamics of love, of love in its practical structure? And the dynamics of recognition is diverse. If it is thought as cognitive, here we deal only with negation, or as love, here we deal with we, we deal with affirmation. Therefore, the dimension of love in Rosmini is not antagonistic to individualism in the way that it would overcome it in an approach of relationship and charity. These dimensions are very important, but they are supererogatory and therefore not assigned to the dimension of civil society, but in the end, in Rosmini, they are assigned to church. The church in this dimension, as we will see, has uh, in uh, the whole perspective of social rights a subsidiary function, a, sub a subsidiary function which does not leave to the state the whole organization of the social sphere. It has an institutional function. Church is not spiritualized, it is not uh, privatized, it is not reduced to a sphere which is only based on the faith, which is based on the individuals, which is collocated in, uh, in that uh, uh, field which uh, we today uh, call, which we today call, not what uh, which Rosmini called the field of civil society. No, it is an institution. Rosmini considers a church as a concrete institution and considers church in uh, all the framework of the three societies in his social right. But these uh, dimensions, these dimensions, Rosmini um, said, um, they are, mm, are not collocated into the civil society, but in another dimension. It considers the Hegelian dimension of recognition as cognitivistic and therefore negative. The social dimension of Rosmini's approach uh, is therefore uh, affirmative and means not a liberty which finds only itself in the other, but is in itself only in the other. There is a real need of the other, also if we deal with an individual approach. But the movement of recognition aims at affirming the subsistence of the other, first of all in the property dimension. In this right, the subject is not contemplating itself in the other, but the safe without overcoming its individuality realizes that its affirmation depends on the recognition by the other.
So, as we said, the supererogatory dimension of charity, of concrete love, of beneficence is in the part which is then organized in the theoretic uh, society or in the church. But the civil society has a recognitive dimension is based, the, the, the idea of right is based on the idea of um, right. This dimension of right does not overcome, as we say, individualism. So this, is, this remains important, this remains fundamental for the dimension of right and for civil society. But in this dimension, it is not simply the Hegelian and abstract dimension of individual right, because this abstract dimension of individual right is only the negative one. It is the one which finds the individuality uh, in a certain way in the other, but in, con in a concurrentive way to the other. Because it finds itself in the other, it finds itself in the other. So the other is seen as another myself. And if the other is seen as another myself, we have the fundamental negative relationship. The recognitive, the uh, structure of recognition in Rosmini is the right the other way round. It's contrariously to be in itself that I find myself only in the other. So it is priority that I recognize the other. I do not find myself in the other, but I am in myself only if I am in the other. So the recognitive structure of right is a positive affirmation of individuality in civil society. And this positive affirmation of individuality in society is not the same with charity and with uh, supererogative uh, actions which for us many are assigned to the part, to the church. But mm, for us many is this uh, um, a structure how individual rights is thought in society, how we have in society positive relationships, which are not in itself than relationships of church, of family, uh, concrete relationships of ethical life. And therefore, Rosmini can think positively individuality, individuality in society, which is not a negative one, which is a positive in, uh, affirmation of individuality. And in this positive affirmation of individuality, we have the positive personalistic structure without the risk of uh, a direct moralization of uh, this personalistic structure. And this same systematic, I think, we have also, um, we have also in the auto liberalists. Or we have, uh, uh, an, we have a thought, we have a conception which is close to them. For this vision of liberty, the reference of all the liberal thinkers to Kant and to Husserl now is central. If Kant claims the constitutive function of rules for the a priori realization of liberty and not only a posteriori to limit others or states' inherence, Kant still has a negative concept of liberty, which could not really be called value in his thought. The other liberalists were fully aware of that. Liberty for Kant is rather a noumenon and a regulative idea and the phenomenologists, primarily Husserl and Scheler, criticize the abstractness of it, claiming a material comprehension of moral values. The concrete dimension in social market economy is based on the intersubjective context of post-Kantian reflection. Here we notice that Rosmini does not follow the same history of ideas. 
first of all, if we consider his critical positions to the Hegelian conception, but at a closer look, the same critical dimension against the Hegelian conception we can also recognize in the thinkers of social market economy. Morality and religiosity are the main characteristics of thick, concrete, intersubjective relationships, which do not consider subjects as individuals. The most valid liberal tradition indeed has always rejected such a vision of an unencumbered self. We don't have to expect communitarism to find these critics. This dimension is very important in Hegel, but if Hegel is less quoted in these thinkers, perhaps it is because of the same reason that we recognize a critical difference to them also in Rosmini, to him also in Rosmini. The subjective affirmation of abstract liberty is resolved only in the ethical dimension of state in Hegel, where the principle of personality is wholly transferred on the level on the public and in the state. Together with Rosmini, the other liberalist thinkers found the moral dimension in the person, but therefore personhood cannot be reduced to a mere negative abstract right which finds interpersonality only at the level of ethical life but has to be found in the foundation of juridical duty on the positive moral recognition of the liberty of the others. For Hegel, however, the ethical life is the institutional dimension of liberty and is given wherever free subjects are given in intersubjective relationships. These are guaranteed only on an over-individualistic dimension. It does not depend on individual decision or arbitrary free, free will, but is a necessary dimension of freedom. And in these considerations, Hegel, without any doubt, has inspired all the liberalist thinkers, has inspired perhaps also Rosmini. In this dimension, liberty is not identified by individuality or its subjectivation, and thus with the presupposition of classical liberalism and libertarianism but by the recognition of the other. The other is constitutively considered in the individual, and liberty means that every individual is himself only when one informs the other in one's liberty. This is right in Hegel, but this is right only on an over-individual level, as we said. On the individual level, we have every time also the negative aspect between individuals, the concurrent aspect between individuals and the problem that I find uh, myself in the other. And not I, if I, I affirm uh, the others uh, also for a, uh, for a positive uh, consideration of uh, individuality. For the social market economy, liberty does not end where the other liberty begins, but liberty is there only where it is affirmed. To affirm liberty, however, the subject has to presuppose the other, and therefore the social relationship stands at the foundation of the concept of social market economy and is the realization of its social dimension. This is the positive dimension in which Hegel, in a certain way, has very positively contributed uh, and in which he was also criticized by other liberalists and uh, by Rosmini and uh, in which in the other liberalist uh, way we have also influence of the phenomenologists and uh, Rosmini, in Rosmini uh, we have, without any doubt, um, the influence of the tradition of the natural, of the natural right tradition. Now we reassume liberty becomes true only if recognized and intersubjectively realized. This is not the negative definition in Kant and not the ethical life in Hegel, but for the other liberalists only the positive liberty in the phenomenology or alternatively the Rosminian concept permit to develop an alternative liberalism which finds its distinguishing element in the idea of order. The ethical institutions in Hegel have introduced the idea that morality has to be realized not only on the level of rules, but also in intersubjective realized liberty. There is, in other words, a morality of, of liberty, not only of individual actions. This dimension was recombined by Rosmini and by other liberalists with the principles of individual and personalist liberty. 
the natural order thus. For the neoliberals of ordoliberalism and the social market economy means firstly functioning social relationships and includes the value of community and the importance of some fundamental moral characteristics of interpersonal relations. Röpke indeed criticizes that classical liberalism only faces a very limited section of life. But people are more than economic concurrents. He wants to establish not only an economic theory, but a broader social view. Therefore, the economic order has to play its part in realizing the Kantian ethics of ensuring the independence and freedom of the citizen from other citizens as well as from the state. It is a liberal theory, but in the comprehension of liberty, which not only negatively ensures, but which positively rules, affirming interpersonal relationships in which moral and religious dimensions are realized, it goes beyond the classical liberal approach. This does not mean that the state has to determine social structures. Because firstly we deal with the philosophical reflection that liberty in its very liberal and not communitaristic sense, is only real if it is recognized. Liberty itself, not its political realization, requires recognition. And without this recognition, liberty does not exist. We deal, in other words, with another structure of liberty than is formulated by a classical tradition in the individual dimension, or by libertarianism in the property dimension. We have in all liberalism and in Rosmini uh, a classical alternative, a classical liberal alternative to both uh, the traditions. This is the consequence of the strictly personal, ontological and not social Rosminian concept of uh, subsidiarity, considering that the social dimension is not eliminated but joined in the same person. Man essentially realizes itself in its personal relations of family and transcendence. These, also the other two societies, theocratic and domestic societies, have to be protected by original and natural law. Here we are more in a, a moral, moral realized uh, dimension of interpersonal relationships. Here interpersonal relationships are identic with moral relationships. But not such in civil uh, society. In the civil society for Rosmini we have a subsidiary stru structure and as a subsidiary uh, institution we deal with them. Um, uh, with uh, individual, individual positions affirmed by individual rights. And uh, for us, many this dimension also, um, also um, the, 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 what, what has uh, government to do, the, the regulation of modality of rights and, and so on, the common good, um, the, all the categories of uh, philosophy of politics, for us, many are based uh, in these dimensions on the idea of individual rights. Man essentially realizes itself not in this civil society. His, the essentialization realization of personhood of man is a moral realization. This is without any doubt true in Rosmini and also in the philosophy of rights. These have to be protected by moral law, by original law, by natural law, and they have to be protected by the same fundamental law of civil society. These relationships produce the fundamental human obligations in the social sphere, besides duties of individual morality, which for us many are not reducible to an individualistic rational logic of Homo economicus. It is rather the dimension of reciprocity mentioned by Zamani, not, but not give the end forgiveness. So the reciprocity dimension we have in the civil economy structure. Give forgiveness, the moral dimension of also of gratuity and uh, of charity, we have collocated in Rosmini in the other two dimensions of uh, society. Man has its most genuine and natural duties within the family and the religious relationship. In the society and in the corporate world, man has the obligations of reciprocity, of rights and recognition. 
Otherwise, this thought would lead to competition between the family, the religious and the professional sphere. But this competition between the fears we don't have in Rosmini. In this sense, we have also a certain anticipation of also. We have diverse spheres of justice in uh, the philosophy of right in Rosmini. Instead of protecting the person, this competence would transfer the person to the superior. So we have to uh, consider the subsidiary structure of civil society. We need to be aware that the individual in a corporate relationship has to find not only moral values and social relations, but has to be protected. And this is the function and the liberal structure of civil society of Rosmini. And in this civil society, uh, the economic relationship has a very fundamental uh, dimension of guaranteeing, of guaranteeing the liberty, the liberty, the freedom of every singular individuum in this civil society. Thank you for the attention.